Um, losing Robert definitely um, is a devastating blow to this secondary unit. Um, I know all the work that he put in, you know, during this offseason to, to get back in position to be able to make plays. And, you know, I was with him throughout the offseason. So it's definitely uh, heartbreaking to see him go down once again, the second, you know, consecutive season here with us. Um, definitely wish I, you know, hopefully we definitely get a chance to to go out there and strap it up together because I know how much the game the game means to Robert. I know how much he puts into it. Um, he just plays with that that passion and fire. And he brings that every single day, so that's definitely going to be missed. Um, you know, um, but I think I, for the most part, will we'll, we'll have my same role that I had, you know, last year. You know, having opportunities to to guard teams number one receivers, and you know, if the case may be with me staying left and right, you know, I'm all for that as well. So I, I believe the the game plan, as it as it's been in the past, will definitely continue to carry on moving forward. Hey, Pat, uh, Cliff was saying that you have the eye of the tiger, and, and Vance said your focus is just kind of on another level. Uh, what, what is your mentality in this camp, and, and is, it, is it different, you know, mentally for you going into this one? You know, having an opportunity to plan a, a system uh, two years straight, you, you get a little bit more comfortable. You, you know what you can get away with. You understand your leverage a little bit more. Uh, you know, the, the, the terminology, the, the, the different tools that you can use to put yourself in a better position um, has been, you know, great for me. You know, I, you know, I have a full understanding of this defense now. And obviously, I know my role, um, you know, just being more comfortable with calls definitely helps you play faster and, and slow you down mentally, thinking wise, um, when you're out there on the field. So, I believe this year is going to be um, great for all of us. You know, for the most part, it's the whole second, uh, whole defense is coming back. Everybody knows how to prepare. Everybody knows how to win now. You know, going through that five-game stretch uh, at the end of the at, at the end of the season, I believe the team really, really started to come together. Speaking on a defensive side of the ball, so hopefully, hopefully that can carry over into this 2020 and 2021 season, and we'll we'll just have to wait and see where it takes us. Hey, Pat, it seems like just dating back to last year, you've been really complimentary of Vance and the job he's done, even under tough circumstances. Just wondering how your relationship with him has grown and what you've seen out of him as he's trying to get things right this offseason, too. Um, and, and Vance has been doing a great job. Um, you know, we have him, you know, you know, the guys that we acquired here in the offseason, the draft, the draftees that we got. I believe we're definitely, you know, all hands on deck, and you have the the personnel that he needs for his defense to be successful. Um, you know, having having you know guys on the outside that can can hold their own, um, which we're trying to find that uh, that second guy now. Um, which I trust the guys who we have here um, on the roster right now. We just have to find out which one can um, can can take on that duty. Uh, but for the most part, having you know the core your the core of your defense back is huge you know now you understand your personnel now you understand what guys can and can't do now you know what positions you can you can put guys in now you understand what the guys you had last year going back and looking at your 16 game resume as a cardinal uh, dc and, and and having the guys that you had on your defense now you, you you know what calls you can get away with you know what calls that you can't call so um, having an offseason to, to really self-evaluate, you know, his self, myself, you know, his players, I think is definitely going to uh, be a, a night and day season for us this year because we could have been so much better in certain areas that we were so close to making plays that we just didn't make those plays. So now we have an opportunity to look forward to those plays because this is nothing but a copycat league. So look at the plays that hurt us last year and look forward to the teams trying to explode us on those plays again this year. Next three, Darren Urban, Captain Fitzgerald, Richard Simon. Hey, Patrick. Um, I'm you curious do. now, you know, you had mentioned trying to find that other guy on the roster. Um, there was a lot of talk even from Byron himself about him being more comfortable in nickel and, and looking forward to that role. And now he might have to bounce outside. I'm curious from your perspective, do you think Byron would fit better in that nickel role? And do you see somebody – emerging as that number two on the roster, do you think they still could go outside to do something with that? Um, I have all the trust in the world um, at Murphy. He can play outside, inside. Um, but honestly, I, 
you know, wherever we put Murphy, he's going to be excellent. You know, he's a he's a great inside guy, and he's gained more and more confidence um, throughout this camp being outside, making a ton of plays outside, um, very, very uh, uh, detail-oriented when it comes down to his press coverage, sticking to his leverage. He's very, very dialed in this, 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 this camp, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to watch him grow um, and seeing the, the steps that he's taking to make sure that he's in the best position possible. But um, as of right now, you know, Murphy's been the number two guy. We've been plugging guys in at the nickel position, seeing who can play there just in case we may have to keep Murphy outside. Uh, you got uh, Jace, who's, who's been phenomenal the last couple of days. Uh, JD, who's been uh, playing some great ball right now. So um, we just brought in um, uh, Webb from uh, the, uh, the Giants. So we got some guys that can play inside if we're if we're not able to to find that second guy out on the street or out in uh in uh in our locker room that we have right now. Hey Pat, um, what was it like with the virtual meetings, getting to know some of the new players on the defense, um, just like off of the field too? How was that process for you? Uh, say the first part of you, I, I really couldn't understand the first part of your question. Sorry, um, with just getting to know so many new players all across the defense, but so much of that starting virtually, what was that like? Um, for the most part, we didn't necessarily meet as a, you know, as a whole defense or an, or an, or an whole team. We we're basically in our, in our position rooms. Um, so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't weird. You know, it wasn't a, a weird process at all because we was able to still you know, see each other and, and, and still being able to communicate with one another throughout a, a daily basis. But the only thing that was different that we wasn't on the field, we wasn't able to come into the to the facilities and, you know, lift weights and sit at the locker and all that stuff. But every, for, for the most part, getting to meet the guys over the Zoom, it was almost just um, the same as, as, as if we was meeting them in person. So, um, you know, for me, honestly, I thought the Zoom um, calls, the Zoom meetings over the off season was phenomenal. We got a lot out of it. Um, you know, a lot, a lot, a, lot, a ton of teaching. So it was a lot more time for guys to really, really, you know, hone in on the different techniques that they needed to, to hone in on and the different calls and, and make sure that they understood the defense versus, you know, when we, if we were inside the, uh, the, uh, the buildings will be, you know, out on the field. So we had a lot more classroom, uh, classwork, uh, classroom um, meetings um, than anything, which I think that could help us out mentally in the long run. Hey, Pat, good to see you, man. Um, I just want to ask, have you noticed a difference in Kyler Murray from year one to year two? You know, physically he looks bigger, but, you know, how does he look to you as a, as a leader and confidence-wise going into his second season? Man, Kyler, Kyler always had confidence. <laughs> you know, he never shied away from that, not one bit. Um, going in year two, um, coming off a, a rookie of the year uh, performance last season, you know, I don't see much of a change. He, he carried himself, you know, to a high level every single day since he walked into the building. So um, nothing, nothing has, you know, really changed on the way he – on the way he's uh, been moving around here in camp, is look sharp, been making all the throws. Um, you know, with him having a second year with Cliff, I think the only thing that's going to change is the, the the confidence in the play calling with but uh, between those two. So, uh, Kyler's been having a great camp so far, looking very very sharp. You know, got some great new tools to work with at at the tight end position. Uh, obviously, with D Hop um, having a complimentary run, running game for him. Hell, this year can can possibly be he can he can possibly get the big boy award this year. So we'll see. We'll uh, wrap it up with Patrick for the final three: Josh Weintraub, Cam Cox, and Mike Jarecki with Coach Kingsbury to follow. Hey Pat, hey. Um, what, how big of of a chip do you have in your shoulder, and what do you feel like you need to prove this season? Um, I know I don't necessarily feel like I need to prove anything. Um, I just want to go out there and play at a high level. I just think you know some people forgot. You know, um, you know what I what I can what I what I bring to the table, what I bring to this team, and um, what I mean to the cornerback position. Um, you know, so I don't necessarily feel I have anything to prove. I just want to go out there and play at a high level for 16 weeks, and uh, you know, and, and just shut the haters, uh, the doubters up. You know, because you know some say I, I may lost a step, but I feel like I gained a couple. So 
this year is going to be fun. Um, you know, the focus level is, is on another level. The intensity level, uh, the intensity is on a, a whole another level. It's just, I'm just ready to play, and I can't wait till it starts with um, the 49ers September 13th. Hey, Pat, hope everything is going well. Um, how hard did you work this offseason? Uh, I remember waking up one morning and I saw you'd been running in the street two hours before the sun got up one day, yelling in your phone. Just, I mean, it, it seems like you were more motivated than ever to get back to playing at the level that you've played at before this offseason. Oh, man. Um, you know, I believe this this offseason was one of the hardest offseason that I – that I that I grind, um, you know, you know, as you get older, you know, some they say some of your you know skills may diminish or you may have to work a little bit harder um, in the off season to put your body in um, certain you know certain conditions to where it knows how to respond when when you know when that certain you know thing uh, uh, certain uh, scenario pops up in a game, you know, have, finding a way to dig deep, finding a way to, uh, you know, fight through, you know, the uh, the lack of acid that may build up throughout a game. So, um, you know, putting my body through certain situations this off season was, um, was uh, much different than my, uh, my previous off season. So um, I'm just ready, man. I'm just, I'm just, my, I'm just extremely, extremely focused, extremely doubt, extremely doubt and, and just, just ready to play some of my best football I ever played in my 10 year career. Patrick, you mentioned Chase Whitaker. What's that say about the off season where obviously it was different? The fact that an undrafted free agent could obviously, you know, make the roster. Um, I mean, Chase is, you know, he's been, I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's, hold on, I'll say it one more time, um, Mike, the first uh, part of your you, question. You mentioned Chase Whitaker, you uh -huh. know, considering it hasn't been the ideal off season. What does it say about an undrafted free agent where he's getting this opportunity? It's going to be a, a, a different opportunity, obviously not having the opportunity to play those preseason games. But Chase has been great so far um, um, uh, throughout camp, you know, um, getting opportunities to go out there and show what he has. And, and that's going to be key, you know, treating these days. I think now we have 16 days until week one, you know, and, and, and having opportunities and, and, and that he's given in practice, he's definitely making the most of them. So, you know, Obviously, this this season is a little bit different from the previous previous uh, uh, the previous ones the previously ones, but um you know th these guys just have to make the best of their situation and, and and when the plays are when their plays are called upon and and practice they just they have to go out there and ball and treat it like a game. Josh has done a nice job. Um, I've made mention of it before, but we had him rated highly coming out. We did not think he would be there with that third round pick and. Um, we knew getting him that he'd have a chip on his shoulder and he'd want to work to prove that he was worthy of a first round pick. And, and that's what we've seen so far. He, he was great through the virtual meetings and he's been, been great so far as far as, you know, working hard and attention to details and, and trying to, to get better at his craft each and every day. He's got a long way to go as, as do all these rookies. And they've definitely been thrown in the fire with how this preseason um, will go. But uh, we like what we've seen and he's got to continue to work um, with Coach Kugler and developed his craft, but he, he's game for it. And um, we expect to see more and more progress as, as this camp goes on. Uh, as far as Buck goes, you know, I had heard from Steve and, and different guys who, who'd been here when he was uh, a coach previously, just his enthusiasm for the game, um, you know, high, high football IQ when you're talking about that position, how it fits into the scheme, the technique, the fundamentals. I mean, he, he has a way he coaches and he's passionate about it. And the, the players feel that. And, um, so I love what we've seen. Have some some veterans in that room mixed in with some some rookies that just got here that we think we have a nice mix, and he definitely brings juice every day to that that group. Cliff, obviously losing Alford was a blow, um, but when you look back at the way Patrick played down the stretch and how the entire defense, pass defense, did a pretty good job, is that reassuring? After, you know, you, you get over the, the disappointment for Robert, you, like I've said before, you understand that everybody in the league is going through this and, and we have to, you know, find the next man up and, and um, continue to move forward. But uh, I thought 
towards the end of last year when, when Pat got his, his legs back underneath him after, you know, having to sit out for about half the season, he was really playing at a high level. And I thought other guys in that secondary, you know, JT, Buddha continue to progress um, as well. And so we're going to continue to kind of work through who is going to be playing that, that corner um, opposite of Pat, but we, we like some of the guys we have and they just have to keep, uh, keep making plays when a number is called. Cliff, I know that, uh, you know, Max hasn't been out there the, the last couple open parts of practice. Um, at, at tight end, are you, do you, do you worry about not having him out there as we get closer to the season? Or are, do you like the idea that some of these other young guys are getting a lot more reps at this point? Max is, is kind of a cornerstone for this offense with what he was able to do last year, whether it's pass game, run game. I mean, he, he can do it all and do it at a high level. And so anytime he's, He's not out there. Um, you know, we, we are going to miss him, but we, we like how Darrell has progressed um, in kind of that role. I think he's made big strides this camp and, and throughout the offseason being in year two in our system. And, you know, Dan um, does what Dan does. And so we hate not having Max, but it's given those op guys an opportunity to maybe get in some roles that they weren't previously getting as much work in. Next three, please. We'll go Josh Weinfist, Catherine Fitzgerald, Richard Sines. Hey Cliff, a couple on Chris Streveler. Um, why did you want to bring him in? What have you seen out of him so far? And what's that adjustment like, that, that learning curve going from the CFL to the NFL? Very athletic, tough. Um, you know, he, he's all about football. He, he has great energy each and every day. And he's he's smart, smart kid. Processes at a high level. He's done a great job picking things up even through a virtual off season. Um, and so, you know, between all those things, you know, he, he won up there in Canada, so he knows how to do that. Um, and, you know, the adjustment, it's still football. Uh, having played up there, I understand there's some nuances to it, but it's not like he didn't play 11-man um, the previous, whatever, 10 years of his life. So um, it's just about getting settled back into to the American style of play and um, mastering the offense. But he's he's been fun to be around. Um, he attacks it each and every day. Every drill you ask him to do, it's full speed, whether it's on special teams or, or at quarterback. And that makes it fun to, for a coach. Cliff, I know in past years, either with you or other coaches, um, the team's mixed in some outdoor days during training camp. Um, obviously, haven't seen that so far, which is totally fine by us, um, I would say. But is that because of just a different schedule or what was the decision making like behind that? Yeah, we tried it last year. Um, it was not a very good day for us. So I, I kind of threw that out this year and um, tried to learn from it. And we're just going to keep it inside. We, we don't expect to be playing in 120 degrees at any point this season. So we felt like we could avoid that this year. Yeah, coach, uh, you know, kind of talking about the differences from last year to this year. You know, this year you're not going to have any preseason games and your first real game's three and a half weeks away. How valuable is it to, to put players in game-type situations in a practice or even like in a scrimmage to kind of see what these guys can do when live boats are flying, so to speak, in a game-type situation to evaluate them? It's definitely valuable. Uh, you know, you have your vets who you know are going to show up and, and the trend throughout the league is kind of becoming more and more that's played less and less in the preseason, if at all. And so for those guys, I don't think it's, it's nearly as important as some of these young guys who would have had their opportunity to showcase for us and, and for 31 other teams. And, and so that's, that's a bit tough, but um, we'll try to put them in as many um, game-like, you know, full speed situations that uh, you, you kind of figure out how they operate under the lights and we'll go from there. But um, it's, it's not, it won't be the same intensity or, or same, you know, flash as, as a preseason game. So, but you have to do you know, kind of make the, the best of what you got. Next, Kevin Zimmerman, Bob McManaman, and Darren Urban. Hey, Cliff. Um, Patrick mentioned a couple guys were getting look at, looks at nickel, and he mentioned Jace Whitaker. How much does that position and getting looks at those guys impact kind of what you do with Byron Murphy in the cornerback position now? It will definitely play a role. Um, like I said, we feel like we have some numbers whether it's nickel or corner, and now it's kind of fitting in those spots, what gives us the best chance, our best 11 out on the field at one time. And, and I think as a staff, we're working through that um, to see where it, it kind of goes. But guys are getting their opportunities and um, making some plays. And so it'll be some good battles for those those spots, kind of see who shakes out as a nickel and, and that, uh, that starting corner opposite of Pat. 
Cliff, Jordan Phillips told us he was seriously considering opting out this year, but had a talk with his family and, and they're, they're, they're going to do it, obviously. He seems very underrated from a lot of people's perspective. How, how glad are you that he's here? And what can you tell us about B.W. Webb? Yeah, Jordan has, has been awesome since he's been here. I mean, he, he is um, a force inside. You know, when he wants to take over a drill, he can. And, you know, to see a big guy play with that type of athleticism inside and run down screens and different things, it's it's been fun to watch. And, you know, he, he has a chance to be a big, big difference maker for us and, and um, you know, be one of the top D linemen in this league from what I can I can see. And then B.W. is a guy, you know, with, with Rob going down, we wanted to bring in some – some more guys to take a look at. He's played in this league. He's uh, played at a very high level in this league there at the nickel. And um, so we'll see how that kind of plays out for him. Cliff, when it comes to the wide receiver position, and I know we know we were asking about it last year and how many receivers you'd want to keep. Does, does the fact the practice squad is going to be a little bit bigger ease your mind a little bit potentially on some of these guys so that, you know, you might be able to keep some of them around more even if they don't make the 53? I think so. I think in the past, that number was probably a little smaller than, than any offensive coach would like. Um, and so with the expansion, uh, I would imagine one of those extra spots will, will go to a wide out. And, and so, yeah, I feel good about our wide receiver group. And um, you really like to keep as many of those guys as you can because they got a good good thing going. Coach Rye, Coach Sully have really done a nice job. And um, everybody in that room is continuing to progress. We will wrap it up with Josh Weinfuss and Catherine Fitzgerald. Hey, Cliff. Um, what has Hassan Reddick shown so far this camp? And then when you look at Lucky Foto, is he bigger than you anticipated? And when you saw him not wearing gloves, what did you think? Hassan is, uh, you know, what I see is a comfort level at this position. It allows him to, to use that athleticism, that speed off the edge, do things that, that he did at a really high level in college. And so I, I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes. Uh, Charlie Bullen's done a nice job, kind of transition him back to that stand-up type guy, that, that rush type guy. And he's, uh, he's embraced it and, and you see him out there flashing. Uh, and then Lecky is, is, he's a massive human being. I mean, he's all about getting better, um, you know, played in a different, style of defense there at Utah, but he's, he's been open to Coach Buck and has been working his tail off to get better. And he's just a you know, big, tough guy. I wouldn't want to mess with him, that's for sure. You watch his rugby highlights, and I can only imagine what that was like. So he's, uh, we're excited to have him, and we're excited to see where that goes. Cliff, what have you seen out of um, the, some of the younger receivers the last couple of days as far as like Andy, Hakeem, Kinshawn, um, where are they at right now? They've definitely taken a step from last year, and that's what we were hoping to see. Um, there's going to be good competition in the back end of that that room, like I just mentioned. Um, but Keyshawn, you know, he's a technician and has come back really trying to do everything right. He's made a bunch of plays. Andy's got the the speed to burn, and we got to find ways to to utilize him more than we did last year. And then Akeem's um, kind of a combination of both, you know, six five, six six, and can really run. And so he brings a lot of athleticism to the field. And um, it's just fun to see those guys take that next step, and they got to continue to do that over the next couple of weeks. What's it like being throwing throwing passes in camp to Larry Fitzgerald and DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah, no, it's pretty awesome. I mean, you know, those are two obviously great players, and you know, Fitz being the legend that he is, it's it's pretty cool. And um, you know, I got out I got out to Minneapolis uh, one time this off season and got to throw with him for for a day. And uh, man, it's just cool to get to be on the same field as couple great players like that and uh you know we got a lot of great players in this locker room so it's just fun getting to go out there every day with them hey chris Catherine from the republic good to meet you um how much have you and cliff talked about shared experiences in winnipeg or stuff like that i don't know if they're he's talked a lot about how cold it is i don't know what else there is to reminisce <laughs> on but like how have y'all connected on that yeah no it's been good i mean that was kind of like the first thing we talked about when i came down for my for my uh you know, my workout and stuff back in January, like he kind of came up to me and we were kind of just chatting about Winnipeg. And um, he had brought up this restaurant called Earl's. It's like, that was my spot up there. And he said like back in the day when he was there, he used to go to Earl's all the time. And I was like, man, that was the spot after games. We used to go to Earl's and just hang out. Cause they, had, they just had like a great happy hour or whatever, like sushi, all that stuff. So uh, it's a good spot. So we kind of talk about that and he'll make a joke here and there about, you know, coming from Winnipeg and stuff like that. But uh I got a lot of love for Winnipeg, so I don't mind it. I love it up there. 
Hey, Chris. Kevin from ArizonaSports.com. Nice to meet you, man. Um, just wondering briefly, could you take us through your time in Winnipeg and kind of how your role there, I guess, was seen by the Cardinals and how it developed where they were saying, let's bring this guy in and he can do something different for us? Yeah, I mean, my time up, up there was a bit unique. I mean, to come in, you know, right when I signed up there, you know, they had a backup, like a veteran guy, and he retired. So the backup spot was open, and I ended up winning that job. And then, you know, the last practice of camp, our starter goes down. So I end up having to start the first three games of my career, which is kind of rare up there because it's a different game. And, like, it just takes time to get acclimated. But I kind of got thrown into the fire right away. And, you know, we did some good things. So kind of from that point forward, I – sort of had like what we call up there as a wedge package. So like on second and third and short, you go in do some type of QB sneak. And then I would stay in and do some, do some different things from there. And we had success doing that. So I ended up starting four games that year. And then, you know, last year, um, uh, our starter was playing. I had the same package and then about halfway through the season, he had got injured. So then I, I was starting, started the whole second half of the season, ended up getting injured uh, second to last regular season game was able to come back for the playoffs um, and just kind of had my package from there again. So I'm not really sure where, you know, the NFL interest came into play because for me it was always, you know, I was so focused on what I had to do up there and just being locked in and, you know, winning a championship. That was my goal that I wasn't really focused on making it to the NFL or anything like that. I was just focused on trying to be the best teammate I could be for my team at that time. And, you know, heading into the playoffs, I heard from my agent that there were some teams that were interested in, um, you know, that's how things kind of got kicked off and then, you know, ultimately got to get out here and get out to a couple other places and do some workouts and, you know, ended up signing here and couldn't be happier with how it worked out. Next up, Josh Weinfuss, Gary Urban, Bob McManamy. Hey, Chris. I'm Josh of ESPN. How are you? Um, two questions for you. The first one is, now that the CFL season's canceled, any more pressure on you to make an NFL roster because you don't have that that fallback and then kind of what's the learning curve of going from the CFL style back to the American style um, football? You know, I wouldn't, I mean, first off, it's super unfortunate that the CFL season got canceled. I mean, I've got, you know, I got a lot of love for my teammates up there and people within that organization. And I know it was really, really tough for all, all of them. And, you know, so I reached out to a couple of my buddies and talked to them. So that's really unfortunate. Um, but I don't think that puts any more pressure on me to make the team. I mean, I put a lot of pressure on myself as it is. And, but, you know, for me, my mindset has kind of just been like, take it day by day. You know, this is, it's a new game down here and, you know, it's a new, new speed and everything like that. So to just soak up everything I can and take as many mental reps as I can and make the most of the actual reps that I get day by day, try to learn from them and just keep stacking that every day to try to get better. So I don't think there's any more pressure in that sense. And I mean, for me, like coming back to that, coming down here in the NFL, like, I feel like tra the transition is probably like easier than it was in the CFL because you go up in the CFL and it's a, it's a really different game. I mean, there's 12 guys on offense, 12 guys on defense with the waggle guys are moving around all the time. So formations are shifting, like just reading defenses and adjusting to that is, is way different. Like, you know, I played college in the States, obviously. So, you know, I'm used to reading American defenses and it's more stagnant than it is up there. So I feel like the transition to be able, being able to recognize defenses and see what's going on is probably easier coming down here than it was going up there. Not saying it's easier or anything like that, but it's just probably less of a transition. Hey, Chris, uh, Darren from the Cardinals. Good to talk to you again. Um, I'm curious on the special teams role. When, when we had talked earlier in the off season, you said that you figured you'd probably give special teams a shot. Coach Rogers was saying that it's so new for somebody like you to, to, just learn how to tackle and block in that kind of situation, that that's the first part of this. How has that transition gone? And, and do you feel like you can make some inroads as a guy who could play some special teams? Yeah, I mean, basically kind of going back to what I said earlier, I'm just taking it day by day and being locked in into meetings, taking notes and then getting out on the field and just going as hard as I can at all times, whether I'm on the scout team or, you know, getting actual reps, like I'm going to go as hard as I can um, you know, within reason to, to give myself a good look and to try to get myself acclimated to what's going to be going on, especially with a shorter camp. Like, there's not a lot of reps to go around. So whether you're on the scout team or getting real reps, I look at those as valuable reps for me to try to learn and try to get up to speed as quickly as possible. And, you know, I think for me, I've gotten to learn every single day and continue to build and get better every single day and just got to keep that going in the next week. 
Chris, uh, some of your coaches have said, you know, we think he can be a, a Taysom Hill type player. What What are your reaction to that? And is that what you what you think of yourself? Um, I mean, yeah, he, he's done some some great things for the Saints, and every and obviously that's kind of been a comparison that's been thrown around. Like that's not really something that I focus on, though. You know, for me, it's just trying to be the best version of myself, and you know, whether that is doing some similar things that he does or 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 not. I'm just going to try to take advantage of all the opportunities that the coaches give me and just attack them full steam ahead and do the best that I can. So, um, you know, if that gives me opportunities to be on special teams and do some things that he's done, uh, I'm more than willing to, to do everything to the best of my ability. We'll do the last three, Catherine Fitzgerald, Josh Weintrust, Bob McManaman. Chris, I want to start by being honest in that when you joined the team, I looked you up on Wikipedia. And your picture there is you in an open fur coat with a cowboy hat, a large necklace, and sunglasses. Can you tell us all about that outfit and if that is typical? Oh, that's definitely not typical. I mean, that was that was post Grey Cup parade celebration. I mean, that was that was something we had such a tight knit quarterback group that year that we, you know, throughout the season, you know, we spent a lot of time together. We would get in early and stay late and just chat and stuff. And we had talked about like hey, you know, if we ever get to the Grey Cup, like, let's, we're going all out for this parade. Like, this is going to be fun. And so, you know, I, I had on the fur coat, I, I got that cowboy hat uh, in Calgary for the Grey Cup. And then I got those sunglasses in Toronto. And then, um, you know, I had a cigar and we had the cup and everything. And I mean, that we were just having fun together. A couple other guys, you know, had their shirts off and stuff like that. And I mean, you don't really get to win professional championships very often. So, you know, when you put that much effort and that much work and, you know, that much time um, into doing something, I think it's only right that you get to enjoy it when you do it. And, you know, those fans were just having the time of their lives too. So um, not going to lie to you, that was probably one of the most fun days of my life. And uh, I think about it every so often for sure. Hey, Chris, after spending so much of your career, I guess all of your career in cold weather environments what's it like being down here and then you know you, you've been a, uh, a quarterback your whole life are you set on that being your course going forward or how comfortable are you changing positions if you if you have to well the first part of your question I mean I grew up in the Midwest and you know I grew up in Chicago went to Minnesota went to South Dakota then Winnipeg so you know the cold weather is nothing new to me but I'll tell you what that cold weather in Winnipeg it hits different it is so cold up there and it's snowy I mean it's negative degrees all through the playoffs. So that's something different. I started to get used to that. So, you know, when I ended up signing here, I moved out here um, kind of around the middle of March. And I was like, I'm going to come out here and just kind of get used to, you know, the weather a little bit. So I think coming out here for a couple months has gotten me more acclimated to the heat because some of the guys, the rookies, especially when they first got out here and we were running outside, they're like, man, this heat is something else. And I was like, I know, but I'm glad I've been here for a couple months because I got a little adjusted. So, you know, I think I've done, been able to acclimate to that and, you know, we play inside, so it's not bad. The other part of that question, um, I mean, in terms of switching positions, like no one's ever talked to me about that here. When I came to work out, Coach Kingsbury told me he sees me as a quarterback and he wants to work with me there. I said, great, that's, that's the position that I love. That's, you know, what I've been doing my whole life and that's what I want to play. But, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again, like I told everyone, you know, whether it's special teams, whether it's getting on the field somewhere else, whatever I have to do to contribute, give myself the best chance to help the team and make the team, I'm more than willing to do. And that's going to be my stance till the day I'm done playing football. So, um, you know, I, I love playing quarterback. I love the process. I love everything that goes into it. But, you know, whatever's going to give myself the best chance to make the team and also help the team, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Chris, you talked about the parade, and it, it looked pretty fun. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, somebody's kissed that Grey Cup every year for 100 years, and this will be you'll be the last one to do it for at least a, another full year. What, what does that feel like? I mean, regardless, it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable feeling. I mean, when you get that trophy, and I mean, it's 107 years old, and that cup on top is actually 107 years old, and just to think that, you know, your name is on there now, um, it's kind of cool. And I mean, there's been quite a few guys throughout the facility that, you know, kind of chat me up about it because it's something unique. And um, I have nothing but great things to say about my time up in Canada. Um, I got, like I said, a lot of love for my teammates up there, a lot of lifelong buddies, best friends, and, you know, getting to 
to work with them. And then that all culminating in a great cup championship is just something that, um, you know, one of the, one of the most things that I'm most proud of, uh, in my athletic career. Uh, well, I'm working in everywhere. Um, uh, I'm just working real hard with the vets, man, with, uh, Beachman and, uh, DJ Humphreys. They've been, you know, working with me off the field. Um, just making sure I can, you know, pick as much, pick up uh, as much as fast as I can. So. Hey, Josh, you mentioned um, DJ Humphreys. He's talked to about not just like working with guys on football, but trying to really get to know rookies, take them under his wing. What's his um, relationship been like with you so far? And what's his personality been like? Oh, it was great, man. He was one of the first guys to text me since, uh, when I got drafted. Um, and ever since then, man, we stayed in communication and everything he sees me doing on the field that he feel like uh, he can help me, he can teach me. Um, you know, he tells me, pulls me to the side, explains it um, from his point of view. And, you know, um, I go out there, and, you know, try to perform it. Next three, Josh Weinfuss, Bob McManaman, Catherine Fitzgerald. Hey, Josh, it's Josh Weinfuss with ESPN. Um, what has playing with Kyler been like? And what have you learned about him that you just didn't know before? Man, I, I already knew he worked hard, but I know he works extremely hard. He pushes me every single day. Um, he actually watched, you know, one-on-one -on -one pass rush. He came up to me the other day. He was like, man, you know, you got to work this. You know, you, uh, you're better than that. You know, I might not have a good rep, um, but he just pushes me each and every day. We talk, we have a conversation. He pulled me to the side, whatever he sees. Just like, you know, that's what all the best. Whatever they see, uh, they feel like I can get better at. They're working with me. Josh, how, how, how was the, the whole process coming together for you each day in camp? Like, are you learning things every day? Are you fine tuning things every day? Are you learning how to not make mistakes every day? What's it been like? Yeah, man, I get better each and every day. I step out on that field and I know the coaches see it, uh, the players see it, and you know, they, they see it in me, so they push me, you know. Um, you know, I'm learning the scheme, learning the technique that Cooks wants me to uh, wants me to do out there, um, and just the level of speed, you know, playing at that high tempo every single play. Josh, I know you've had a good deal of overlap with what you saw in college as far as um, Cliff's offense. But is there anything that surprised you about that so far? Any of the adjustments that you've made? No, um, you know, it's just a, it's a different offensive scheme just because it's an NFL scheme. Um, but, you know, everything um, we kind of ran it in college last year, you know, the tackles being mobile, getting outside, uh, you know, the downhill run, uh, downhill running um, and just protections. Um, it's all pretty much, you know, I've seen it before, but it's just fine tuning it at this level. Next up, Kyler Odegaard, Bob McManaman. Josh, so did, did Kyler give you legit pass blocking advice or was he was he just being encouraging? Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> you know, he, he pushes me, man. He he works hard. He wants to see the same out of me, same out of me. Um, so you know, whatever he sees, he and push me outside of the field mentally, emotionally, he he does that. Josh, you're you're, you're not ruling out uh, not being the starter at right tackle, are you? I'm sure that's something you're still hoping that you can win. Uh, I'm just working in everywhere right now, um, learning everything I can from uh, Beachman, Justin Murray, and DJ Humphreys. Catherine Fitzgerald, you're up. Um, what are some of the small things that your teammates have done to get to know you, to help you um, get to know them during a year when so much was virtual? Uh, and we, uh, we text all the time, um, and, um, in group messaging, um, on the field, um, we're communicating in the, in the, um, in the hotel, we're communicating, um, you know, just, just trying to build that bond, you know, since we didn't have, you know, a preseason, we, um, you know, just building that bond each and every day, getting closer and closer. Right back to you, Catherine. Um, when you're texting a lot, who has the best emojis? Uh, uh I should probably say hump. <laughs> Funny guy. <laughs>